Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Key Fangie Network. You're watching the one and only Key Fangie Network. This is episode 583. That's right, we're on the road to 600 and 583. I'm here with the talented and beautiful Erica Rose, and I just want to say thank you for being a guest on our talk show once again. Thank you, Keith, for having me. Super happy to be back. No, absolutely. It's, been, it's going to be our one-year follow-up. And I really like that ring on your hands. Really shiny. Ooh, this one? Yep. <laughs> I got this in Florence, Italy. No, that's really cool. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was one of those things where I looked at, looked at it and I was like, "Oh, that belongs to me." <laughs> now, for people who want to see our part one, because this is going to be a part two episode, mm -hmm. our part one is available on YouTube. Go to um, YouTube.com, type in KeithAndrewNetwork.com, and make sure to hit the like and subscribe button. Also, go to Facebook.com, make sure to like our fan page, KeithAndrewNetwork.com, you can see all my videos there. Also, go to Instagram, KeithAndrewNetwork, as that being said, and, um, you're also on social media, so your media will be also be plugged as well on Twitter and Instagram. Great. Right. But, but it's really great to see you after what it's been a lot like a year or so. I mean, do you have a do you have the date when we last did this? Um, not really, but I think it was episode four hundred and sixty-eight, or so. It was in the four hundreds. I think it must have been about a year ago, but it feels like many years ago for some reason. Well, that's just what happens when we don't talk on an everyday basis, right? <laughs> true. This is true. How have you been? Pretty good. It's super, like I said, it's nice to see you again. And yeah. at least we're working on the friendship building. That's what I really wanted. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> so I'm going to keep the... Um, and some things never change. I still uh, hesitate around it. <laughs> so uh, we're going to have a basic conversation kind of similar to the first one. But it's going to be a little bit different. So okay. you get to ask me. I ask you. And we're going to have fun with it. Love it. And the first question I was going to ask you is what caught my interest. Is you live in L.A. But you are also born. You live in L.A. But you were born in Hartford, Connecticut. So I'm going to yeah. ask you, why did you make the transfer over to Connecticut to L.A. instead of Connecticut to New York? Well, um, I don't know if you recall, but the last time we spoke a year ago, I was in Brooklyn. Um, so I have gone from Connecticut to Los Angeles to Brooklyn and now back to Los Angeles. Um, I missed Los Angeles. So, on February 8th, I came back of this year. Um, really happy to be back here. I'm enjoying the sun right now and talking to you at the same time. Can't beat it. Um, but, you know, I do miss my, my community in Brooklyn so much. And um, I think my personality type really enjoys both. If I could only have them right next to each other, but... There's a reason why they're not next to each other. That's what makes them so different, right? No, absolutely. Yeah. And I, I know I mentioned this. Um, I think I mentioned it last time when you mentioned L.A., but I will mention it again. Did he ever get used to those earthquakes? Oh, well, you know, when I lived here um, five years ago, I only experienced a couple earthquakes, and one of them was when I was sleeping. Um, that didn't really bother me. I think I might have woken up and been like, oh, that was weird. Um, and I'm a deep sleeper, you know, so it, that didn't bother me. Um, and I think one was when I was in the shower. That was weird. Because uh, I was like, oh. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, but uh, they don't really bother me. Well, I, guess I know some people are very freaked out. One thing that would freak me out was like saying have an earthquake during a thunderstorm. I think that would be kind of scary. Yeah, it would. <laughs> Does that, that happen? 
I know, and uh, thank God it hasn't, but I'm not saying, uh, you know, it's one of, the, one of those things you always think about at night. Yeah, I might think about that tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be texting you in the morning. <laughs> Couldn't sleep all night. <laughs> well, if you have a nightmare, just say thanks, Keith. <laughs> yes, I will. Um, I typically have nightmares, actually, for some reason. Um, so I won't be too surprised. But if it has anything to do with um, different types of weather and natural disasters coming together, then I'm coming to you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> the next question I was going to ask you is, I was looking up questions how to make it different from the first time, and I know I make people drink, <laughs> but um, I, want to, <laughs> I want to make questions different, and I saw that you are a dancer, you work in the music, and you started modeling as you were 13. So the first question I was going to ask you is, who influenced you to become a model at the age of 13? Sure. Um, modeling is something I think I did have a genuine interest in, but I was more interested in being a runway model. Um, I think maybe that was influenced by my mom a little bit, um, and both my parents modeled. So I think it was the model thing was in the family a little bit. Um, and uh, so I went to modeling school, actually, where I learned a lot. Um, everyone has their take on modeling schools, but I learned a lot and I got a lot of work from them. So I was very pleased and had a great time. Um, uh, but yeah, I guess maybe it was my parents who really had an influence on me as far as modeling goes. You know what, um, could you tell us about your, um, because you come from a family of models apparently, <laughs> and um, what do you guys did to ever did like magazines or where did did you guys ever do like modeling for commercials? As a family? Well, overall. No. Oh, oh. Well, um, my mom and my father had separately done magazines in the past, um, and um, I did a lot of hair magazines, um, and I actually did get to do some runway stuff as a teenager. But what happens is in order to make that a career you have to grow tall and that wasn't happening for me I'm 5'4 I'm very petite well you look good so you don't have to it's, a, it's not a competition you don't have to be perfect um, I've always wanted to express myself more as an artist more more than you can as a model not that you, modeling is very expressive but um, in its own way. But I always wanted to be able to tell a story. And um, it wasn't until after my modeling career, if you will, that I was, I jumped into that. So I'm grateful I didn't get stuck in the modeling world because I think I would have maybe if I was six inches taller <laughs> or something. <laughs> Even five inches taller. Who knows? I could have had a different life. But here I am. <laughs> That's true. Who knows? If I didn't have a disability, maybe, I don't know, what. maybe I would be a wrestler. Or, you would never know. But then that's, maybe you would be doing this. It's true. But yeah. you, you believe in um, alternative realities? What? Do you believe in alternative realities? What do you mean? Like an alternative reality, like you said, for an example, uh, if you are five inches taller, who knows what you would be doing? What you would be doing? And if I didn't have a disability and an alternative reality, who knows what I would be doing? I could be being a wrestler. I would say that that's a really great question. First of all. Um, I think that I do believe in alternative realities because even if, say, we're all meant, no matter how we come out as humans, no, if say we're meant to do the same thing no matter what, different circumstances might get in your way until you get there. And, you know, that's, that's out of our hands sometimes. 
No, absolutely. And we make alternative realities all the time. For an example, yeah. say in this reality you're brunette, and another one you could have been blonde. Or for my case, I have a disability, and on an alternative reality, I wouldn't be wearing glasses. But okay, that's too well okay. far fetched. But I mean, like for an example, a better example is say. You have two opportunities in your life. You can be a TV actor, or you can be a prefer, um, professional model, like what you're doing. But if you just stay as a professional model, you never really going to experience that life alternative to what it would have been if you just did acting nothing else. If that makes any sense, like yes, for me. No, go ahead. No, no, no. I agree. That's all I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> like for me, if I never, I used to work over at North Face, and mm -hmm. um, if I never screwed up over there, I would have probably still been over there, you know, for what, 10 years? Going to be 10 years? But I was there for three years, and I kind of, I don't know how to pace myself. And one thing I do antagonize people because I always rust into something. I have, I have ADD, so I constantly need to be doing something. I like to move. The um, <laughs> like the song, you know, you like to move and move and like you know, like that. Uh, but after a certain per period of time, it kind of gets boring and stalemate, stalemate, whatever the hell the word is. I'm trying to think. It gets stale, so you need to get up and you have to change it. I give you a better example. Um, me and my brother used to share the room, and he used to go to school. And every six months, I would constantly move the room around. And, and if you watch my interviews going back, I used to be facing this way. I used to have the bed on this direction because I liked to change up the environment. I liked. Just change, you know. Change is good, but at the same time, you don't want too much change. If that makes any sense. I totally agree with you. Um, perhaps some people are like addicted to change, and then you can't really get anything else accomplished because accomplished, you're just trying to change things all the time. But um, I think that's also part of the reason why I really wanted to make the move out to Los Angeles. Is I was. I needed something to help me get to my next chapter and I'm a very sensitive to my environment and maybe you are too maybe that's why you're like I need to move this around um, and so I'm so grateful that I had the opportunity and had the opportunities and to to make this move out here for now and you know just embrace it really one thing but, I um, oh go ahead I'm sorry have you moved anything around in your room since I last saw you? Because that cat was there before. <laughs> um, I haven't really moved. I kind of lost interest in moving stuff. I got a hardwood floor. So yeah. before, I kind of had carpet, I'd, so it kind of didn't matter. Now, it's kind of like once I put something in a certain place, I try not to mess up the floor. But, you know, there's certain things, you know... Um, during the months, you know, I do like different holiday themes, you know, it's the background. I got the, um, let's see, when did I get this thing? Here, I can give you an example. I think you saw this a year ago when it was actually on the full belt. Long story short, is I wanted to bring this to Comic Con. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, you can see, I'm, I'll give you a better shot. Trying to match it. It's hard to you see. You can see like the plastic is starting to peel up. And yes, yes. I had the um, idea, bright idea, like I always do. Saying, "Hey, if I use Gorilla Glue, I can make it better." All right, bright <laughs> idea. Unfortunately, it scrapped the shit out of it. So I was like, uh -huh. "Well, I can't use this as a belt anymore because it's embarrassing." I took it apart. Now it's a centerpiece. So. With that Love being it. said, I don't know if you saw this a year ago. I might have had this a year ago, but I'm making a mess over here. 
I went on Facebook and I got my custom trophy and I'm going to bring this to WrestleCon. Actually, another subject I do want to talk to you about. And Love this it. was like a hundred. Not bad for a. <laughs> hey, you believe it? That's actually a good one. You believe in ghosts? Get you down in a couple minutes. I do now. <laughs> but I um. Last year. Anyways, go ahead. No, let's, let's just go jump right into it. You don't mind me. I constantly <laughs> change the background. I but, love it. No, this is... I want to bring this... What's this thing you wanted to talk to me about? I'm sorry? What's this thing you wanted to talk to me about? Oh, the belt. Oh, as yeah. After I took apart my other trophy, I'm like, well, I want something to parade around. So I finally convinced my brother and saying, hey, we're going to a wrestling event. And I do not want this autograph whatsoever, maybe down the road. Because once I get this autograph, I have to keep it in the box. And then it's just for show. So mm -hmm. the idea is uh, one day when we meet in person, I want us to take a picture together of us holding the belt. So, and this symbolizes everything, <laughs> everything I accomplished was having a warning disability over the past... Six years, so that's why I created a new belt. And this thing falling over this, it's going to help us make a new segue of going into a new subject. Is do you believe in? Like I said, I'm trying to make things different from the first episode, and so that's why I'm like trying to grasp things out of thin air. Do you believe in life after death? Like I said, I'm trying to make this as different as yeah. the first time um so i don't i don't i can't wait to watch our first one because i don't recall what we talked about but i know it was fun um i believe that our spirits move on but i don't necessarily think i'm somewhere erica thinking oh that last life was great <laughs> really missing my last life, you know, because if that was the case, I would be here right now being like, oh, remember five lives ago? Oh, you were there. Wasn't that fun? I don't remember my past life or where my soul was or my spirit was, you know, but I'm sure it was somewhere. Not to sound morbid, I was always thinking about doing my life over, knowing I would only do my life over only if I was able to know everything I know now. You know, I would have stayed at my first job longer. I would have saved a whole bunch of money. I would have started my talk show a lot sooner, probably. Or at least done it right the first time. Like, the permission forms. <laughs> that would have been a great idea. But instead of this doing things half-assed, but you know, that's, it, that's the thing about life. It's a warning experience. You're taking one step at a time. In answer to your question about your mention uh, energy, energy cannot be destroyed. It can mm -hmm. only be transferred to one thing to another. Yes. And I don't know... I oh, so Scott. what do you do you think do you do you believe in life after death or do you think it's just energy transferring? Well, I know we keep interrupting each other, but the Skype, you know, faded and faded out. I do apologize. <laughs> no disrespect. Um, I think there is something after this. I don't think this is just it, but maybe in a way, I'm kind of hoping there's a reset button, but you can just redo your life, knowing. Everything you know now. We, um, good question. Yeah, I have to ask John Edwards whenever I get to see him again. <laughs> but um, who knows? You know, that's the part. You know, you don't know if you know if, if you might go on uh, another adventure. You you don't know what is out there. You, that's true. It's like you don't know. Yes, pretty there, much. There's no way to know. All I know is that I don't know. You know, it's like <laughs> if I was like another human in my last life, I wouldn't know. All I know is how I feel about energy 
and like a soul and spirit and I think that is that moves on well let me ask you this how do you feel about people coming out and saying they do remember their past lives do you think it's true or you think they're just full of shit <laughs> I don't know why people would come out and say things like that if they were full of shit, maybe to get attention. Yeah. Um, but maybe they're experiencing something that I'm not, or maybe they're, um, I, I don't know. I haven't really watched anyone that thinks they're experiencing past lives. Have you? I'm not really, but that goes into my next question I was going to ask you is, do you believe in time travel? And, you know, are predicting the future. What I mean by that, there's a certain video, like, how the Simpsons predicted the future. i give you a quick highlight. Then I'm going to pass it over to you. It's, you know, um, 1994, 95, um, there's an episode where Lisa gets married to this rich guy. I think he's British or something. And um, he talks into the watch. He predicted we were going to have eye watches or smart watches. There's an episode in 2000 um, where um, Trump becomes president. He's on the escalator. He's waving. A couple of years later, that exactly happens. He's on the escalator. He's waving. Exactly as they predicted in the Simpson episode. Um, September 11th, um, where supposedly Bart holds up $9.00. And towers are supposed to represent one one one, you know, nine eleven. Um, but that was about ninety seven, ninety eight. Um, there's other pictures. It could be Photoshop for this matter. Uh, there's pictures where people actually go back to nineteen sixty seven and they're walking around like this. And it's like, why would you go back? Actually, why? Would there be people in 1967 or the 70s walking around like this? There were no cell phones back then. So seeing someone do this, it's kind of like, unless they're mentally disturbed and they're talking into their hand, <laughs> you really don't know what they're talking about. But it's kind of weird how certain, pe see, certain people know certain things. And I'm going to pass it over to you And after I finish this statement. I think it's Tom Clancy, or it's either James Patterson. I can't remember who it was, but they had intel of the government. And they knew about September 11th. They knew attack on Libya. They knew about certain events before it happened. And or say, because this guy's a book author, he would write a story. And a couple years later... As you read or listened to, because I'm a big audiobook person, as you listen to the story, the events actually happen step by step. So it's kind of eerie or kind of ironic. How did they know? How did they predict things? You know, do you think it's all intertwined? You know, time travel, life after death. Do you think it's all like one big thing or do you think it's just a big coincidence? <clears throat> I mean, I've heard about some of the things you're talking about, and for some reason, it's hard for me to think that people can predict such specifics about the future. I think, think you know, talking about a watch, watches evolving into smart watches, I mean, I think it's reasonable to say someone could predict that. Um, moving phones, but as far as like Trump goes and 9-11, that's creepy. I don't know. I mean, it gives me the chills. <laughs> but I, it's really hard for me. I'm not there yet. I don't, I don't think people can really predict specifics like that. I just, and I'm not saying that you shouldn't think that. That's just where I'm at right now. I didn't believe in ghosts. I didn't believe in spirits last year, so we'll see. Things can change. i give you an example. Now I'm going to pass the show over to you. It was the last nine minutes left. Is, you know, when I was about 10 or 11, I haven't actually talked about this on 
the interview for in a long time. So yeah, you're actually the first person I'm telling this to in a long time. My grandmother Mom. passed away a um, long time ago, and I said, you know, Mama, if you're here, give me a sign. And I was sitting at the kitchen table by myself, and are you said that or did a phrase? What? Oh, you still there? Okay, that, that froze for a minute. <laughs> so I said to my grandmother, you know, if you're here, give me a sign and see one dead silence that I heard. And I heard that and I ran upstairs. And I'm like, ah, Mama's in the kitchen, Mama's in the kitchen. And everyone thought it was crazy. That was my first experience. My second one is I was in my sister's room when... Um, she went to college and she moved out. Um, the room was vacated and I had to room, I wanted my own room. Long story short. And I used to lock the door at night because I wanted my privacy. And when I was trying to go to sleep, I got this blinding light. And if you want an example of what type of a blinding light I'm talking about, is stick a flashlight in your face and imagine staring at that. And you can't block it out. You know, I put my hands over my face, you know, I still sort of. So I put my face in the pillow and a blanket, still uh, sore. So I went like this, I elbowed. And I swear to God, it actually felt like I elbowed somebody. And what was weird is because I was the only one in the room when that happened. That's why I go sleep as a night mask, because. I don't want to see shit when I'm, I'm trying to go to sleep. Wow. So those are my two um, ghost stories. So it's safe to say you also believe in ghosts. I do. And I, I don't do. blame you. <laughs> and uh, I guess being a fan of um, John Edwards and crossing over, that actually supports the theory too. It's pretty, I find it very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Well, sorry to hear about your grandfather, but it seems that his spirit's alive. Well, you mean grandmother. Oh, you said grandmother. Okay. <laughs> um, well, yeah, possibly. crazy. It is. Like I said, I'm going to make this as different from the first time. I know the first time we did the interview, I asked you, you know, how was life growing up? Were you a study nerd, party animal? Did he ever do a human pyramid? Uh, what uh, were coming back to me now? <laughs> <laughs> uh, what were some of your favorite acting moments? Why did he go to L.A.? So when I do the follow up, like we're doing right now, I try to make it as different and more interactive as possible. But like I, I said, it. this is not about me. This is about you. So passing the show over to you, you can ask me anything you want. This is your time. Gloves off, you know, there's, you know, uncensored, freedom of speech, self-expression. Even though I was told by certain people if I want this to be catering more to kids, I should just remove the F word. So you can say ass or shit, you know, or that, that's fine, but people have uh, been telling me, Keep it PG-13, and I have. Occasionally, I do slip. But most of my shows, as a right, it's been PG, PG-13. I don't really okay. use the F word. So if you want to use the F word, that's, use like the F bomb or something. But I try to keep that between a, um, from the age of 10 to about 21. Because I try to cater to everyone. And it okay. makes the sponsors happy too. You would like to, you you would like your show to market as many people as possible. Yes. Well, I think that's fantastic. Um, you know, it's really tempting to just use the F word right now. <laughs> I'm that type of person. You're like, oh, don't do that. Okay, I'm gonna go do it. <laughs> um, but I won't do that to you. Um, anyways. Oh, gosh, what do I want to ask you, Keith? What? You know, this is something I'm going to do 
once you know you edit the show, I'm gonna watch them back to back and really reflect on the past year. So I guess what I can ask you is, if you were to reflect on the past year, how do you feel you've grown since we last talked? Um, and what is something that you would wanna work harder on as as someone in the entertainment industry? All right, um, give me an example. I suck at interviewing. <laughs> I, I can interview people. I have diarrhea on the mouth, so I can constantly ask you, what do you think of this, what do you think of that? But if somebody interviews me, what I want is, and I maybe this is part of the problem, I want to be interviewed in person. I want to sit down and physically be in the room with somebody. I hate, I absolutely hate talking on the phone because it's like, I, because I did a phone interview for the Mike Rander show, and I had it on speaker, and I was like this, and I was like over here, and I was staring, huh, look at a picture, huh, I didn't know, because I do have a marble picture, when I woke up, I have a big marble picture of, um, hanging above my computer, so I'm like, huh, oh, look at the picture, look over here, but I like doing video interviews, I get to dress up, and it helps me get focused. If I'm talking on the phone, my mind starts to wander, and I don't have a filter, and I realized during the interview, I said the word screwed like 10 times, and I said the word like asshole maybe like three, four times, and but I didn't... But when you on the phone? Yeah. Okay. And I'm like... I, I never once dropped the N-bomb or the F-bomb or the C-bomb, whatever bombs you want to talk about. But, yeah, I dropped, the, you know, the ass bomb or because I, people say, oh, Keith, you're an asshole or, you know, you keep screwing things up. And he's like, well, you use colorful language. I'm like, yeah, I kind of realize that. So when I do interviews like this, it kind of, it's therapy for myself because I give myself the practice of saying, Okay, be more professional because in your, if you're in a room by yourself, your mind's like, just say this, just say that. Who gives a sh you know, about this or that? But when you actually talk to someone, you actually have to, you know, put your foot in your mouth and be like, be professional. You have to walk a certain way. You have to talk a certain way. You know what I mean? It's different from being on the phone from being talking in person. But, um... Answer your question about the past year. Um, I'm doing this June will be officially six years. And I do want to talk to you about that when we wrap up. Um, this year would be six. So last year was going to five. Um, I slowly am getting better at my people skills. That's why I do my talk show. I feel like I am processing. Some people think I'm progressing slowly like a poop. Or it's our, I think my soul is like a bowel movement. You know, it's not great. It's not wonderful. It's moving. Eventually, it's got to work out. You just have to keep a puss on through. Um, that's great that I refer to my talk show as a big bowel moment. But, um... <laughs> I don't know. It's <laughs> At least you weren't use the word poop and not ass. Oh, well, like I said, <laughs> but uh, it's a process. Okay. And That's what I, I give you a, a, a quick highlight. I did seventy-two yeah. phone interviews, wrapping up all six years. I'm probably gonna talk about this when it becomes six years. I did seventy-two phone interviews, and then I was still having panic attacks and social anxiety. Um, then I tried doing this, you know, what the camera, you're the camera, and this is, I see you on the screen. That's what camera season one and season two is. So in season two, is this is the camera I record from the computer. Don't ask me why, it seemed like a good idea at the time. And then season two was, here's the camera. That's really cool. Record directly from the computer screen. And then season three, it's what we're doing now. Cut in half, I'm on the right, you're on the left. And, you know, I'm there, there's a progress. I didn't want to do this from the start because then you wouldn't see a process. 
Of course, I did everything ass backwards, so that's why you see a longer process. But you see someone who has poor social skills, who did not want to be seen, to somebody who wants to be seen, who doesn't shut the hell up, and she takes opportunities when he sees it. So yeah, I think I came a long way in six years. And I know Bless you, see it's true. There's Bless you. Um pollen out here. You know <laughs> what they say when he sneezes it's true. Ugh I'm fine. <laughs> um so so yes, you have done that for yourself. That's no, fantastic. Absolutely. Now, we're yeah. wrapping up your show. Now, I feel like I have a sneeze coming on. <laughs> <laughs> it's contagious. Pretty much. That's what they say about yarning. That is true. Now, I do have a couple questions for you off the air. But wrapping up, are you? how can people follow you on social media? And now, apparently, we asked this last time, but you on Twitter... Instagram, LinkedIn, are you following me on Instagram? Because I'm following you back. Yes, of course. Um, yeah, I'm Erica LaRose on um, Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitter. Um, that's Erica with a C. And um, my short film is in post-production, and you can follow that. It's called 165 Star, and I'll, I'm um, managing that right now, and I'm posting there as well. And I look forward to sharing that film with you, Keith. No, absolutely. And if yeah. you have any girlfriends, uh, if they're interested, maybe we can do a group interview down the road. I'd love to, yeah. And the one thing I do want to promote before I ask you my last question is, will you or would you be interested in traveling to New York this June? Um, I do have plans to travel to New York in the summer. Um, to visit my friends, and uh, so I guess the answer is yes. All right, the reason I ask is because of this June, June 15th, to a little plug for it, hopefully it works out, knock on wood. <laughs> on June uh -huh. 15th, it's going to be my sixth anniversary celebration for my talk show. And, oh. you know, a lot of people are like, oh, wait for 10 years, six years is not really that big of a deal. So I wanted to test the water. So I'm going to have an event at the War Community Center only if I get enough people. And it's going to be like from 2 to 3, I'm going to tell the whole story. 3 to 4, I'm going to do like a Q&A and a roasting. And then 4 to 5, an autograph signing. And the okay. reason I wanted to have you on the show again very soon, like apparently right now, obviously, is I want every single person who I ever interviewed in that six years to be at the show and I want you guys to, guys to roast me. And I was wondering if it's possible June 15th, that's a Saturday, I would love to have you at the event to roast me. And that's plan A. Plan B is if I don't have the event, I'm still going to do something on that day. Or maybe we can get dinner or something in I would love to have you there if that's a possibility. Yeah, let's talk about it after the show. Um, what I am trying to do is plan my trip out, out um, to New York City soon. So I will put that date in my calendar. No, yeah, absolutely. Again, ask you off the air, but wrapping up when I first approached you again to be a guest on the talk show for the second time. What was your first reaction? And after doing our special second interview, how do you feel now? And what do you recommend it to other people? I, of course, recommend it to other people. You're <clears throat> really, oh, it was great to talk to. Thank you for having me. Um, yeah, I mean, I was just, yeah, sure. That was my reaction. <laughs> I was like, happy to. Totally. You're a breath of fresh air. Thank you. No, I appreciate it. A lot of people recently yeah. said to me, you know, one interview is enough. <laughs> Aww. It's like, well, I'm glad I have that effect on you. You can use me well, for a modium if that's the case. Are you talking to a lot of people in New York City, or where are you finding your interviewees? Um, I have interviewed in, interviewed everyone for over six years from New York, New Jersey, 
Connecticut, uh, California, uh, Los Angeles, Canada, England, you know, I interviewed one person from Japan, one person from France, that was a lot of fun, doing the uh, time difference, but mostly, you know, a lot of people from the Eastern, Eastern Seaboard to the Western, from up north, the great up north, I interview everyone from Mebular. Okay, good to know. I didn't know if you were speaking in New York City. Because I would say, if all these people say they know are from New York City, <laughs> go somewhere where people aren't running around so much. It's true. But you seem to have, have a pretty diverse uh, geography there. I do, and I've been trying to reach out to the younger audience because I'm looking at my demographics. I have like 41% women audience and like a 36 guy audience. I have um, from 21 to 36, 36 to 48, 48 to 50 and up. But I don't have that 18 and up or 16 and up. So I'm still trying to figure out. I don't want to make my show too cartoony. Mm -hmm. that I have to dumb it down. Even though some people say it's already dumbed down. But I'm still trying to cater to those two lines. So it caters to, you know, every single person. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's a work in progress. It's If you try to uh, please everyone, you're going to set yourself up for failure. Uh, you can't please everyone. <clears throat> it's impossible. So I think you're doing a great job. No, I appreciate it. Now, I do have a couple questions for you off the air. I'll wrap okay. up our interview segment. It was a real honor and privilege having you as a guest. And I'm looking yes. forward to part two down the road. Well, part three down the road. Part three. I love it. Paul oh, Williams. This is Vanessa Lina. Uh, Asian Monroe. Uh, Hi, Paul. This is Cynthia Baxton. Hey. I'm Sonny Fisher. This is Shane Smith. My name is Alexandra Bowie. This is Amelia Clover. Hi. I'm Amy Linden. Hi, I'm Amy Linden. Hi, my name is Asata Caldwell. Hi, buddy. I'm Brooke Percy. Hi, I'm Brian Bird. Hi, I'm Casey Dunn. Hey, it's Cassandra Kavinsky. Hi, I'm Christina Breza. I'm Cindy Hogan. I'm Courtney Sinello. Hi, I'm Daisy. My name is Deborah Jane East. Hi, my name is Danielle Marasea. Hi, everyone. I'm Victoria London. Hi, I'm Heather Krona. Hi, I'm Heather Callahan Stevens. Hi, I'm Jay Nicole Ralph. And it's Jamie Patrell. Nice it's to meet My name is Julia Brunkowicz. <laughs> Kathleen Wills. Kimberly Amato. Hi, my name is Laura Putnam. Hi, I'm Laura Shapanis. Hi, everyone. I'm Melissa Damas. This is Michelle Mupo, a.k.a. Fuji. I'm the anime fan of them. Hey, my name is Sarah Joy Mount. Hi, I'm Susan Winder. Um, hi, everyone. This is Vino Cleone. Hi, I'm Sarah Zena. Hi, I'm Stephanie Herrera, and I was just on the Keith Andrew Network. It was tons of fun. We used up all our time and then some. I really recommend this show, and I try to be a guest on Keith's show. It was super fun. Wait. <laughs>